Axis and Allies, 1942, second edition. Today I'll be talking about specifically about bombers and bombing raids. So bombers cost 12 IPCs each. They can move six spaces during one round of play. They attack at a four or less, and they defend at a one. So that means four or less, one, two, three, four, and a one, meaning just a one, would be a hit. They can land anywhere on land. However, they cannot land on aircraft carriers or obviously in water. So I've set up a little scenario up here to show how a bombing raid works. So bombing raids are tactical moves to uh, damage facilities to make them incapable or less capable of building units. To determine how many units a facility can produce as the number or the IPC value of wherever that facility is. So on, for this industrial complex, it is 10 IPCs, so meaning this factory can produce 10 units or that industrial complex. There's other industrial complex like in Russia, which is eight, so eight units. India has one at the start of the game too. That's three units or wherever you decide to build one throughout the game. If you put one in Egypt, it'll be two units you could build per turn. So the way it works is the attacker decides to do a bombing raid by sending in a bomber. They can send in multiple bombers if they'd like, but for this example, I'll just send in that one. So they can send in the bomber and declare they're doing a bombing raid. During a bombing raid, only um, air units can produce, or um, I'm trying to think of the word, not produce. They can only participate, was the word I was looking for. So any of these land units here, even the AA gun, cannot participate in a bombing raid. The attacker and defender may choose to even send in um, intercept fighters. So if this fighter was in range, it could also come to the battle and participate if it would like. Industrial complexes have a unique attribute and they actually gain a defense value directly against bombers. At a one or less and it directly removes the bomber from the game board if it rolls a one. Obviously you can't get less than a um, one, but it's one or less. So this fighter here can't quite reach the battle because that'll be one, two, three, one, two, three. It has four units, or, or not four, four movements, I should say, um, to make it, and it still needs movement to land back safely. Let's say you had an aircraft carrier here with a fighter on there that could totally make it into battle. So during the first phase of a bombing raid, only fighters are present. So if they choose to send it, they don't have to send it into the fight if they don't want to. They can choose to send it to try to knock down that bomber. It's a two or less for the defending unit, and it's a one or less, as in just a one, for the attacking unit. Combat only lasts round or lasts one round. So this is good just in case you want that bomber to attempt to survive. So attacking would go first to one or less, they roll a five, they missed. And the defending would roll, so they actually rolled a one. So it's a one or a two, so that would directly move the fighter, which they could take it out on. They could take it out on the bomber, but that would kind of be a little useless during the game. So after that, defending bombers can't participate at all, but the industrial complex gets direct hits against bombers. So if I were to bring in two bombers instead of that one, I could roll two dice. And if I rolled a one on any of those, say this was a one, one bomber would be directly removed. If not, if both survived, like in this instance, you can take the dice, roll them again, and whatever you roll is an amount of damage given unto the factory. So this, in this case, I rolled 11, which is really good for the attacking side. You can take 11 chips and place them under... So that'd be a red, a red, and a gray to symbolize 11 to place on top. So now the factory can only, pro well, actually it can't produce anything until the amount is down less. Every IPC up is a unit taken. So if there's three points of damage, it can only produce seven units because that is a um, producing factory of 10. In this case, 11, so I've maxed out the factory. It can no longer produce units unless it is repaired. And repairs cost one IPC at the beginning of each game. 
The max damage per factory can be double whatever the IPC value is. So this is 20, that'd be 16, that'd be three. Or uh, six, sorry. And so that's basically how all that works. The returning bombers would land again. They could choose to participate in another bombing the following round or go elsewhere. If that fighter was still alive, it could land back again. All the units would still remain on there. If you even like, this is not necessary, I bought a bunch of black chips off of historical board gaming to symbolize damage throughout the game so it doesn't get confusing. To where, oh, where were all these? No need damage markers you can use. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I answered some of your questions. Enjoy your day.